Hello viewers, in this video lecture we are going to discuss design of RCC deck slab supported on all sides. Let us take one design problem. For a RCC bridge, the slab panel of a reinforced concrete T-beam and deck slab is 2.5 meter wide between the main girders and 4 meter between the cross girders. Design the deck slab of the bridge for IRC class A loading using the following data. The data is given in the question are materials to be used for the design, then the thickness of the slab which is 200 mm and the thickness of the wearing coat which is 80 mm. Let's start the solution part. As per the question, I have drawn the whole deck slab of the breeze which, which consists of the deck slab and the cross girders and main girders. So in that in that whole deck slab I have to consider one small panel whose size is 4 meter into 2.5 meter and it is marked in the figure. This is the size. So in the first step, I have written the given data as per the question. The loading IRC class A, then the material concrete and the steel, then the thickness of the slab and the thickness of the wearing coat, which is all these are given the design question. In step 2, we have to calculate the design coefficients. So in this design method, we are going to adopt working stress method of design. So the design coefficients we have to calculate as per the working stress methodology. Before calculation of the design, uh, design coefficients, so you have to take some values from IRC 21. First we will take the value of sigma CV from table 9. So let's see. Uh, this is the table 9 of IRC 21 which gives the properties and basic permissible stresses of concrete. So if you see for M20 grade of concrete permissible number 3 permissible flexural compressive stresses sigma C allowable this is the value of sigma CB of M20 grade of concrete. Next we have to take the value of sigma st which is a permissible stress for steel from the table 10 of IRC 21. See the table. This is the permissible stresses in reinforcing bars. So different grades of steel is given and in the right side there are corresponding permissible stresses. So here for Fe415 it is. 200 MPa. Next we have to uh, uh, then we have to note down the modular ratio which is M from the table 9 note 1. See this is the note 1 for calculating stresses in section a modular ratio ES by EC of 10 may be adopted. This is given the note 1 of table 10 of IRC 21. So after, after noted down of the three, three values, sigma CV, sigma ST and M, then we have to calculate the coefficients. First we will calculate the neutral axis coefficients, which is N equal to 1 divided by 1 plus sigma ST MCB. So the value will be 0 0.25. Next I will calculate J, whose value is? 0.917 and then I will calculate moment factor where Q equal to half sigma CB and J which is comes out as 0.765 okay so these are the coefficients which will be used later when I design the RCC tax lab following working stress methodology 
Next, in the question, I have to design the deck slab as per uh, for IRC class A loading. So, in this figure, the IRC class A and B loading vehicles are given. In the same same figure, two loadings because both A and B are the type of A and B are same, but the loads are different. So, if you observe. For IRC class A loading, see here the loads are given for the different wheels. The upper part is for the class A and the lower part is for the class B. For the class A vehicle, the maximum load is 114 and 114 for one pair of wheels. So that means 114 and 114 are the maximum load for one pair of wheels. So the maximum load for each wheel will be 57 kilo newton. So when I will design the deck slab, so I will consider two wheels of each having 57 kilo newton of load. In step three. We have to calculate bending moments. First, we will calculate bending moments for live loads, that is for wheel loads, and next we will calculate bending moments for dead load. To calculate bending moments for the live loads, that is for wheel loads, we will arrange the wheels on the slab panel. So, how we will arrange? So, in figure 2, the arrangement of class A wheel load is shown. So, we will place two wheels, each of 57 kN of load on the slab panel. As I already explained, one pair is total 114 kN. So, each wheel, ha uh, each wheel will have 57 kN load each. One wheel I will place at the center of the slab panel. And according and with respect to the first wheel, the second wheel will be placed on the slab panel. And the dimensions and the distances from the from the uh, uh, two wheels from each other is according to the loading IRC class A loading as given in. Uh, IRC 21, IRC 6. So this is the dimensions which we, ha we have to follow when we place two wheel loads on the slab panel. So after the placing of wheels on the panel, next is to calculate bending moments. So how we will calculate bending moments? To calculate the bending moments due to the wheel loads, we will follow some methods. So here we are going to use the Pigot's curve, the method developed by one scientist named Pigot. To calculate the bending moments due to Pigot's curve, first we will calculate the bending moment coefficients. To use those pigot curve, first we have to calculate two things. One is uh, u, one is u, and then v. What is u and what is v? So if you see, for a wheel, we have two dimension. See. The wheel is the vehicle is moving the, in this direction, and it is the transverse direction of the vehicle. It is a transverse direction and it is a longitudinal direction of the vehicle. In which direct in this direction the vehicle is moving. Okay. So we have to find out the dimension of the wheel 
which is touching the ground if you see in the longitudinal direction means along the direction of the movement the dimension of the wheel touching the ground is v capital b similarly along the transverse direction of the movement the dimension of the vehicle touching the ground is capital w and the dimension of b and capital w will get from this table so for 114 kN of load this is 250 b is 250 and w is 500 now what is u and what is v we have to understand see this is the wheel this is the wheel this is the area which is touching the ground suppose this dimension is 500 and the other dimension is 250 so after the dispersion of the wheel load this 500 dimension after dispersing after dispersion through the wearing coat at 45 degree angle it will be it will become 0.66 meter similarly the dimension 250 mm after dispersing through the wearing coat at 45 degree angle will become 0.41 meter so u is the dispersed wheel direction dimension along the b and p is the dispersed wheel dimension along l then we will calculate u by b and p by l and also the value of k which is 0.625 for k for k 0.625 we have to follow this pivot curve we have different pivot curve for the different values of k so here the value of k is 0.6 so we'll use this one so we have u by b and v by l values so if you, if i identify suppose u by b is 0.264 will be somewhat here in in this in this line and p by l is 0. Point, 0. Point 102 and 0.102 will be somewhat here so if we, this this value is the coefficient of m1 into 100 see this is m1 into 100 similarly we have to find out the coefficient m2 into 100 from this graph from this graph so next if you see using pivot curve for k equal to 0.6 the moment coefficients are read out as see m1 into 100 i i get from that graph or pivot curve this is 19 so m1 will be 0.19 similarly m2 into 100 is 15 so m2 will be 0.15 then we will calculate the short span moment which is mb the formula of mb is w into m1 plus 0.15 m2 and its numerical value will be comes out as 12.11 similarly long span one i will calculate which is ml w multiplied by m2 plus 0.15 m1 and it will be comes out as 0.10.17 kN meter so these are the short span moment and the long span moment corresponding to the wheel load w1 now we have to calculate bending moment due to load w2 which is a unsymmetrical load if you see 
this W2 is placed unsymmetrically in the slab panel. So at this time you should remember one important thing that is Pigot's curve is applicable only to the load which is placed symmetrically like the wheel load W1. This W1 is placed at the CZ of the slab panel that is it is symmetrically placed. So we used Pigot's curve to the W1 to calculate the bending moment due to the load W1. But the curve cannot be apply cannot be applied for the load W2 as it is unsymmetrically placed. So we have to follow some indirect method to calculate the bending moment due to the load W2. So what is the indirect method? We have to understand. See, this is already exist W2 wheel load in the slab panel. So I will I will apply another imaginary wheel load W2 in the slab panel so that both the both W2 are equidistant from the CG line okay that means after application of this 2W 2W2 load in the slab panel the load system has become symmetrical okay now how to get the bending moment values due to W2 by Pigot's card? Understand? <coughs> See, first we will calculate the bending moment due to this whole area. Means, first we will try to calculate the bending moment when the load is applied in this rectangle covering the both W2 ok suppose this is bending moment 1 which in which will include both W2 force ok next what I will do what I will do I will calculate bending moment due to the load applied in this small rectangle which will exclude the W2 okay by including the W2 by including the W2 I will get the bending moment bending moment 1 next by excluding the W2 I will get the bending moment BM2 okay so if we subtract BM2 from BM1 which will let I will get the bending moment due to due to this W2 and this W2 isn't it by subtracting BM2 from BM1 Okay, so the resultant bending moment is the bending moment due to 2W2 load. Clear? Next, if I, if I divide this by 2, I will get bending moment due to its W2 BM due to its W2 okay BM1 minus BM2 by 2 now that methodology I am going to apply in the next steps so let's see here an imaginary load equal to W2 is placed symmetrically as shown in figure already we have understand this line 
then I have to calculate intensity of load what is the intensity of load see what is the dimension of this W2 W2 this uh, this load means this is the this is the contact area of the wheel this is the contact area of the wheel after dispersed through the wearing coat which is already we have discussed okay this is the contact area of the wheel after dispersing through the wearing coat which is 0.66 into 0.41 which is clearly shown in the figure okay over this area over this area how much load is acting that is 57 kilonewton so 57 by the area will give us the load intensity so this is the load intensity which is 210.64 kilonewton per meter square okay now to use the pigot's curve first of all i have to i have to uh, I have to find out what is the value of U and what is the value of V. Come to the figure. In this figure, as I am already I am already discussed that first we will calculate the bending moment due to this rectangle covering the whole both W2 wheel load. So what is the dimension of U? The U is u is this one 0.66 and what is dimension of v the distance between the two wheel loads outer surface of the both wheels is 2.81 okay so u will be 0.66 and the v will is 2.81 so u is 0.66 v is 2.81 meter so then I will calculate u by b v by l okay u by b v by l then k these values we will calculate similar to the previous load w1 then I will use pigot's curve okay. so how to use pigot's curve already we have discussed when we calculated bending moment for the load W1 so by following the pigot's curve this is the pigot's curve this is the pigot's curve for k equal to 0 0.6 the same pigot's curve we use for load W1 so I have the value of u by b v by l so so u by b v by l I have so the value of m1 into 100 I will get from this curve and m2 into 100 I will get from that curve okay so from the curve I will get the values of m1 into 100 that is 13 m2 into 100 that is 3.5 so the corresponding value of m1 and m2 I will get now we have to calculate the short span moment which is mb the same formula already we used w into m1 plus 0.15 m2 now important thing is what is the value of w unlike to the previous case where we used w equal to 57 kilonewton which was the wheel, wheel load so here it will be different so how it will be different we will understand see in this figure as I already discussed the whole area we have to consider okay so 210.64 is the intensity of the load which is kilonewton per meter square it is acting on this area the dimension of this area is 2.81 into 0.66 so multiplying these two dimension with the load intensity will give us the total load w so that is why here that this is the value of w 210.64 2.81 
and into 0.66 so rest of the thing is same value of m1 is 0.13 m2 is 0.035 similarly i will calculate ml and this, are, this is the short span moment bending moment and this is the long span bending moment so the next step i have to calculate the bending moment due to the load shown in figure 4 before going to the figure 4 in the step uh, in the figure 3 i will understand already we have calculated the bending moment due to this uh, due to the load acting in this rectangle including both w2 now i will calculate the bending moment when the load is applied in this small rectangle excluding the w2 okay so in the figure 4 it is shown the small rectangle which is excluding w2 so its dimension is 1.99 and 0 0.66 if you compare the figure 4 and 3 you will easily understand this thing okay so here u equal to 0 0.66 and p equal to 1.99 so this is 0 0.66 and this is 1.99 okay so u by b comes out as 0 0.264 p by l 0.498 and k 0.625 as the k value is similar in all three cases so the same pivot curve I have to use which is for k equal 0 0.6 this is the pivot curve same pivot curve I am going to use again to calculate the to get the value of m1 into 100 and m2 into 100 by applying by using this pivot curve for u by b and v by l so I will get the m1 equal to 0.15 and m2 equal to 0 0.048 so similar to this case uh, similar to the last case here also the w will be 210 see w will be the total load acting in this area the load intensity 210.64 and the area is 0 0.66 into 1.99 so this will give us the total load w w so i have calculated short span moment as 43.49 then long span moment as 19.50 kN meter okay is it clear so i am going to the next step now moment due to w2 are computed as for the short span moment as i already discussed i will calculate the bending moment for the large rectangle then i have calculated bending moment is for the small rectangle then i will subtract one from another and divide it by two okay this was the bending moment for the large rectangle including both w2 and this is the bending moment due to the small rectangle this one including excluding w2 and then divided by 2 will give us this mb similarly i will calculate ml okay so this and that are the final bending moments in short span and long span respectively for the load w2 that means for the load w2 i have followed some indirect method to use the pivot curve okay now as these are the live loads these are the live loads we have to consider impact and continuity factor so as it is a well, it, it, this, these loads are the moving loads moving over the deck slab so it will have some impact impact of loading so what is the formula this impact factor i equal to a divided by b plus l what is the a 
it is some constant whose value is 4.54 rcc and the value of b that is also constant is 6 for rcc so a and b are constant and l is 4 meter the span is 4 meter in this case so impact factor has comes out as 0.45 so applying continuity and impact factor the total live load moments are given by so uh, here I have added up both the the bending moment due to W1 and this is bending moment due to W2 and that is multiplied by impact factor 1.45 and continuity factor 0 0.8 and finally comes out this is the short span moment and similarly this is the long span moment next now i have to calculate the bending moments due to the dead load okay the bending moments due to live load is over and this is the bending moment due to dead load so the first step is self weight of the deck slab self weight of the deck slab the thickness of the deck slab is 0.2 so i will multiply with the density of concrete or unit weight of the concrete and it will come out as 5 kN per meter square. Then self weight of wearing coat. The self weight of wearing coat, its unit weight is 22. Wearing coat unit coat is uh, uh, unit weight of the wearing coat is 22, and it will multiply with the thickness. Therefore, total dead weight is 6.76 kN per meter square. So here k equal 0.625 and 1 by k equal 1.6. So why we have calculated another term 1 by k you will understand later. See next step is using pigot's curve for the slab complete, uh, which is completely loaded with uniformly distributed load we will get the coefficient of m1 and m2. Now see in this case this is the slab panel it's suppose this dimension is 4 meter and that is 2.5 okay so as it is a dead load the load is distributed throughout the whole panel of the whole panel means the slab panel is uniformly distributed so that's why the pigot's curve we are going to use in this case will be different from the other three cases in the other cases what happened we have this slab panel and the load was applied at some particular area either for this particular area or at some particular position in this way the load loads were applied in the previous cases but in this case the load is uniformly distributed throughout the whole panel so that's why the pigot's curve will be different see this is the pigot's curve this gives the moment coefficients for slab completely loaded with uniformly distributed load it will give the coefficient m1 for k and m2 for 1 by k so that's why we have calculated k and 1 by k so uh, for the value of k which is 0.625 somewhere i will i will get the value value in this uh, this scale and 1 by k is 1.6 so, so we will get this value somewhat here in this scale so against the value of k i will get the coefficient m1 and against the value of 1 by k, I will get the coefficient m2. Another thing, in the previous curves, we got the value in terms of m1 into 100 and m2 into 100 from the curve. But here, I will get directly the value of m1 and m2 from the pigot's curve. So in this way, I have got the values of m1 and m2 from the pigot's curve. And then... I have to calculate the short span moment. 
so the equation of the short span moment and the long span of water is same but here what will be the value of w that thing we have to understand see so as i already told for the slab panel this is the slab panel the dead load is acting over the whole panel means the load is distributed uniformly over the whole panel okay and already i have calculated the intensity of the load is 6.76 kN per meter square so to get the total load the load intensity 6.76 will be multiplied by the area so what is the area so one dimension is 4 and other dimension is 2.5 of the slab panel so that's why it is written 6.76 is the load intensity 2.5 and into 4 is the area of the slab panel so i will get the total weight in this way so finally i will get the short span moment as 3.14 and the long span moment as 1.57 kilonewton meter for the dead load bending moment So for the dead load, I will apply only the continuity factor because this slab panel, so I have this deck slab, already I have shown in the start starting, okay. So this is the panel I have considered. So the, the slab panel is continuous over all its sides, okay. So I will consider only the continuity factor, not the impact factor because as it is a, not a dynamic load. It is only dead load, so I will consider only the only the continuity factor. So applying continuity factor into effect, short span moment is 2.773 and the long span moment is 1.26. So after combining both so, uh, dead load moments and the live load moments, so I will get uh, I will get I will get uh, final moment is 22.21 kN meter for the short span and for the long span I will get 14.10 kN meter. This is combining both dead load and live load. Okay. And the next stage step is very important that is the design of deck slab. So already I told in the video that we are going to use the working stress method so first i will calculate the effective depth required for that deck slab so this is the formula small d equal root over m divided by q b where m is the maximum moment of m b and m l the maximum of m b and m l i will consider as m then Q is what? Q is the moment factor and B is the width of the deck slab. So in between in between uh, 22 and 14 the maximum is 22. So I will take then moment factor already we calculated as 0.765 and width B for the slab will be taken as 1000. So the required uh, effective depth is calculated as 171, approximately 171 mm. Therefore the overall depth required. So if you imagine that, if we assume that we are going to use 12 mm bar, so 171 plus 12 by 2 plus 20 is the clear cover. So the gross depth required is 197 mm which is less than 200 mm. This is the 200 mm because this is already provided and this is required. 197 is the required and we have provided 200 mm. So hence our design is safe. Okay. Next provided effective depth. How much effective depth we have already provided? It is the gross depth 200 mm, 12 by 2 is the, 12 feet is the diameter of the 
moment reinforcement, tension reinforcement, and 20 is the clear cover. So provided effective that has counts out as 174 mm. Next, I will calculate the area of the tension reinforcement required along the short span of the slab is computed as area of steel equal mb divided by sigma st zd mb we know sigma st zd all these values we have already calculated so ast has comes out as 696 mm square using 12 tor bars the spacing required how much spacing required 162.5 mm therefore we have provided 12 tor bars at the rate of 150 mm center to center along the short span see this reinforcement this reinforcement i will provide along the short span to satisfy the moment m b okay next is we are going to provide the reinforcement to satisfy the another moment m l and that reinforcement will be provided along the long span long span okay see as the short span moment is more okay so long span moment is less so the reinforcement due to the long span moment reinforcement due to the long span moment if this is the reinforcement due to the short span moment the reinforcement due to the long span moment will be above the short span moment okay is it clear the rain as the higher the reinforcement due to the higher moment is at the bottom and reinforcement due to the lower moment is at the top this is the lower due to the lower moment and this is due to the higher moment this is Assuming the long span reinforcement as 10 mm, so we will calculate the effective depth of the slab for the long span moment as 163 mm. So next, similar to the short span moment, here also I will calculate the area of tensile reinforcement along the long span of the slab is computed as AST equal ml divided by sigma st zd here ml we know and all the other values we already have calculated so a, a, a required reinforcement area has comes out as 471.66 mm square so using the 10 tor bars the spacing required will be 166.52 mm therefore we will provide 10 tor bars at the rate of 150 mm center to center so these are all about the design of the deck slab of a rcc bridge this is the long span moment reinforcement for the long span moment and this is the reinforcement to be provided for the short span moment so this is all about the design of RCC Dex Lab. So if you like the video, please share with your friends and subscribe my channel for the more upcoming videos.